Aung San was the man most responsible for Burma's eventual independence in 1947 and is often cited as a modern hero and as the father of the nation in modern Myanmar. This video will cover and investigate the time in Aung San's life from his birth to his involvement as a student leader and to his embrace of revolutionary nationalist political movements which finally led to his decision to leave Burma in 1940, shortly after the beginning of World War II. Aung San's political pursuits at the time set him on the path that would eventually make him a national leader, though few people could have predicted that this would eventually be the case in the early stages of his life. Part A. Childhood. Aung San was born in the small town of Natmao in Magwe on February 13, 1915. The family was considered middle class. He was the youngest of nine siblings. He had three older sisters and five older brothers. After his birth, his family consulted a traditional astrologer who gave him the name Ten Lin, which he never used. Aung San's name, Aung San, was given to him by one of his older brothers, Aung Tan, who wanted a brother whose name rhymed with his own. This was very unusual at the time, since names starting with A, were then only given to children born on Sundays, but Aung San was born on a Saturday. Aung San received his primary education at the Uta Bita Buddhist Monastic School in Natmao. In grade 7, he moved to Yanangchang to attend the Yanangchang Anglo Vernacular National High School, where his elder brother, Ba Win, had become a teacher. Aung San wanted to go to the school because he envied his older brother's ability to speak English, and he refused to eat any food until his parents allowed him to attend. After one year of study, he was ranked the top student among all vernacular and Anglo-vernacular schools in Burma, after which he was awarded a government scholarship of 10 chats per month for the rest of his time in high school. He was able to complete his last three years of high school in only two years with distinctions in Burmese and Pali, enabling him to continue collecting this scholarship during his first year at university. His favorite subjects in school were literature and history. While in high school, he also worked as the editor of the Yanangchang National School Newsletter. Aung San did not speak before the age of three and afterwards rarely spoke before the age of eight. When he was a teenager, he often spent hours reading and thinking alone, not responding to those around him. In his youth, he was generally unconcerned with his appearance and clothing. In his earliest articles, published in the opinion section of a local magazine, The World of Books, he opposed the ideology of Western-style individualism supported by Utant, in favor of a social philosophy based on what he called the standardization of human life. Aung San later became friends with Utan through their mutual friendship with Unu. Part B. University Years After he began attending Rangoon University, he quickly became involved in student politics, but was not at first successful. Unu, Aung San's close friend and the future president of Burma, admitted after independence that his first impression of Aung San in 1934 was that he was a really queer character and he became widely known for being very eccentric. In his first attempt to run for a student office, a committee representative for his dormitory association, he was not successful. The same year, Aung San attempted to run as a member of the student union, but was also not elected because some members thought he, quote, lacked friendliness and respect for others. His admitted goal at the time was to eventually be elected president of the student union, but at the time, he lacked the social skills needed to do that. In 1935, after Unu was elected the student union's general secretary, Aung San was appointed the editor of Away, or Peacock's Call, the student union's magazine. While he was enrolled in university, his heroes included Abraham Lincoln, the nationalist 19th century Mexican politician Benito Juarez, and Edmund Burke, whose parliamentary speeches he memorized. Beginning in 1935, the British government developed a plan to slowly lead Burma towards independence and went on to hold several general elections between then and the eventual end of their administration of the colony. But possibly because of his background, at this stage in his life, Aung San rejected the introduction of a British-style parliamentary system in his country. 
After the country's new constitution was introduced that year, he and his friend Unu protested by burning a Union Jack outside of the Secretariat building, the seat of the local government. In February 1936, Aung San was threatened with expulsion from Rangoon University, along with Unu, for refusing to reveal the name of the author of an article he had run in the student newspaper called Hellhound at Large which accused the university's rector, J.D. Sloss, of chasing his female students and of frequenting brothels. After refusing to give the name of the student who had authored the article, Aung San was expelled from the university. His friend U Nu, who was the president of the Rangoon Students' Union, had also been expelled a few days earlier for giving anti-British speeches in which he criticized the same university official. These two students' expulsions led to the three-month-long second university student strike, after which the university authorities negotiated with the students and retracted their expulsions. The events of 1936 had a profound effect on the future of Aung San. Before 1936, he was not well known outside of Rangoon University, but during the student strike, his name and image were published and discussed in daily newspapers, and he became known across Burma as a nationalist revolutionary and a student leader. He also served in his first student leadership positions, first as secretary of the Student Boycott Council, and second as the student representative for the government's University Act Amendment Committee. Later in 1936, after the student strike was over, he was elected the vice president of the Rangoon University Student Union. Because of his participation in the student strike, he was not able to sit for examinations in 1936 and received his Bachelor of Arts in 1937. After his graduation, Aung San began studying for a law degree. His intention at the time was to take a shot at the examinations for the Indian Civil Service, and go into politics. Along with other student leaders, he founded the All Burma Student Union in 1937, in which he was elected General Secretary. In 1938, he became the president of both the All Burma Student Union and the Rangoon University Student Union. But his pursuit of these commitments did not leave him enough time to study, and he failed his examinations in 1938. After 1938, he resolved to abandon the pursuit of a conventional career and committed himself wholly to revolutionary politics. In October 1938, Aung San left his law classes and entered national politics. At this point, he was anti-British and staunchly anti-imperialist. He became a Takin when he joined the Dobama Asiayan, or We Burmans Association. The term Takin means Lord or Master, a politically motivated title that proclaimed that the Burmese people were the true masters of their country. Before then, it was only used as an informal title for certain high-ranking Western people in Burma. He joined the association as a member of its executive committee in the faction of the party led by another Takin, Koda Meng. Aung San rationalized his decision to join the party on the grounds that it was the only militant and intensely nationalistic political party. Though some more cynical observers noted it was the faction in which Aung San would be most successful in influencing and finding a leadership position within. While working in the party's executive committee, he helped to organize a series of countrywide strikes that became known as the ME-1300 Revolution. The name of this movement was based on the Burmese calendar year of 1300. In the Western calendar, this year occurred between August 1938 and July 1939. On January 18, 1939, the Dabama Asayan declared its intention to use force in order to overthrow the government, leading the authorities to crack down on the association. On January 23rd, police raided their headquarters at the Shwedagon Pagoda, arrested Aung San, and held him in prison for 15 days on charges of conspiracy to overthrow the government. But these charges were later dropped. Upon his release, Aung San proposed a strategy of pursuing Burmese independence by staging countrywide strikes, anti-tax drives, and guerrilla insurgency. These strategies were popular within the Dobama, and in April 1939, he was elected its general secretary. On October 19, 1939, Aung San became a founding member and the first secretary general of the Communist Party of Burma. 
Aung San later claimed that his relation with the Burmese Communist Party was not smooth since he joined the party and left it twice. Shortly after the founding of the Burmese Communist Party, Aung San founded a similar organization, alternatively known as either the People's Revolutionary Party or the Burma Revolutionary Party. This party was also Marxist and formed with the goal of supporting Burmese independence against the British. It survived and was later reformed into the Socialist Party following World War II. Aung San was not paid for most of his work as a student or political leader and lived for most of this time in a state of poverty. He was recognized by his peers for his strong work ethic and organizational skills, but was sometimes criticized by them for having poor public relations skills or for a perceived arrogance. During this period, he never drank alcohol and abstained from romantic relationships. Part C. Escape from Burma Following the outbreak of World War II on September 1st, 1939, Aung San helped to found another nationalist organization, the Freedom Bloc, by forming an alliance between the Dobama, the All Burma Students' Union, politically active monks, and Dr. Bama's Poor Man's Party. Dr. Bama served as the Anarchin, or dictator of the Freedom Bloc, while Aung San worked under him as the group's general secretary. The group's goals were organized around the idea of taking advantage of the war to gain Burmese independence. The organization, goals, and tactics of the Freedom Bloc were modeled on the Bengali revolutionary group Forward Bloc, whose leader, Chandra Bose, was in regular contact with Bama. On March 1940, Aung San attended an Indian National Congress Assembly in Ramgar, India, along with other Takins, including Tantun and Bahain. While there, Aung San met many leaders of the Indian independence movement, including Jawaharlal Nehru, Mahatma Gandhi, and Chandra Bose, as well as the leaders of the Indian Communist Party. Aung San returned to Burma and began touring the country in June 1940 in order to promote the idea that, if Burma was invaded, the Burmese people should not support the British government. That month, while giving a speech at a village named Dongji, he was warned by local policemen not to mention political events which had happened recently in the Chin Hills, which had been administrated separately from Burma since 1924, which made him go out of the way to do so. On June 29, 1940, immediately after this speech, the district superintendent of police at Hanzada, a man named Xavier, issued a warrant with a reward of 500 rupees for his arrest under the charge of sedition. By mid-1940, the Burmese government had also issued warrants for many other leaders of the Takins and the Freedom Bloc, due to those organizations' efforts to organize a revolution against the British, at least partially with Japanese support. According to Dr. Bama, after hearing of the warrant for his arrest, Aung San decided to leave the country and consulted with Bama about how to do so. Some of Aung San's colleagues advised him to go to the Shanghai International Settlement and make contact with communist agents there, but he was unable to find passage on a ship traveling to that city. Bama was advised by a contact at the Japanese consulate, Vice Consul Fuki, that Aung San could not leave on a Japanese ship since the British authorities were monitoring them but that he should instead leave on a ship friendly with the British government bound for Japanese-occupied Xiamen, after which Aung San would be intercepted by Japanese agents. Aung San agreed with this plan and spent a month waiting inside the Japanese consulate for an opportunity to escape. Besides Bama's account of how the trip had been organized by the Japanese consulate, the Communist Party of Burma claimed that Aung San had left to seek the cooperation of the Chinese Communist Party. Aung San himself later stated that the goals of the trip were open-ended. Thank you for watching. In the next part of this biographical series about Aung San, we will examine Aung San's activities throughout the period of World War II, from his first contacts with the Japanese in occupied China to his eventual collaboration with them as a national military and political leader, and to his eventual decision to side with the Allies close to the end of the war. We will look at how the hopes, dreams, and abilities of Aung San were molded by his experience with the Japanese, 
and how he eventually came to position himself as Burma's most powerful and influential national leader by the end of 1945.